Joanna Simpson here at Quant Mines International in Barcelona. Joining me now is Wim Schoutens, Professor of Financial Engineering at the University of Leuven. Thank you very much for joining me today. You're welcome. Just tell me a little bit about how you're experiencing the conference so far. Oh, the conference is great. I think it's one of the best conferences around. Um, I think almost 20 years on a row here. And this year I brought uh, plenty of PhD students and they're also enjoying it a lot. So uh, no complaints, all fine and uh, congratulations. And how are they finding the experience? I think they, they really enjoy it. Uh, absolutely a nice experience for them. Uh, uh, completely different than academic uh, conferences. And uh, it's really added value, I think, on, on the research for them. And can you tell me a bit about your work on ESG investing in sustainable finance? So, uh, yes, of course. Um, during, let's say, more or less the last five years, we have been trying to see whether from a quantitative point of view, some statements that were made on ESG and sustainable finance are actually true, whether we can see it in the numbers, where we can see statistical proof of it. Actually, um, the answer is unfortunately no. I see that um, the claims that are made uh, of enhanced returns and lower risk are not true. And I'm sorry to say it, but from a quantitative point of view, it means for me that more or less uh, it is a scam. And let me explain it a little bit more in detail. From a theoretical point of view, actually, it is a no brainer that it is a scam. Why? Because many of these problems are optimization problems, optimization problems where you look for an optimal solution. And if you on top of this problem put additional constraints, sustainability constraints, then the, the solution you find is always suboptimal because you're restricted. So you have to be honest in that, that the solution is not optimal, but suboptimal, that green investment comes at a price and at the additional risk. And that's basically the, the takeaway of, of a couple of years of research and, and research papers that we have been uh, doing. And what are the, some of the things to avoid to mitigate the risk of greenwashing? Um, greenwashing, unfortunately, is omnipresent in this field. And I agree there with Greta Thunberg, who was also saying this recently. I do not agree with her solution uh, to it, but it's definitely there. And I think it's one of the main problems. And it's amazing what is actually sometimes around. And in my presentation, I talked, for example, about sustainability linked bonds where um, investors are sold a bond. And in case when certain sustainability goals are breached, and hence you could say it's going to be worse for the climate because CO2 emissions have not been, targets have not been met, the investor gets a higher return, not a lower return, a higher return. So I cannot see how sustainable investment basically explains to their investors that if it turns out wrongly, you get a higher return. And if it turns out correctly, you get a lower return. So it's sometimes absurd what is happening. And this, this absurdity is sometimes is, is linked to uh, the greenwashing and to, to put it a little bit strongly, actually often ESG investment facilitates more greenwashing than it prevents greenwashing. And what do you think is the future of ESG investing in sustainable finance? Um, I think we are, uh, many people are waking up that we're not living in uh, my little pony land anymore and that there are additional risks uh, coming. And I see two main risks and one that is litigation risk. I think many investors will basically start suing their asset managers and their pension fund managers because if you agree on the fact and actually uh, asset managers like uh, of, of BlackRock are, are admitting it, that there is lower returns and higher risk, then this is not the mandate that you have given to your banker or your investor to invest with lower return and higher risk. You have to have an informed consent to, to that he executes that agenda, which is fine. If that is your kind of vision on the world, that is fine. And if this is what you want to do, this is fine, but it's, there should be an informed consent. And that this is, in many cases, it, it is not. And actually, you see this picking up in the States, where kind of, I think, uh, by the time that we uh, now, about 19 states are already suing their kind of uh, asset managers 
for um, the money that is managed in the, the state uh, uh, employees pension yeah. funds, for example. And you, actually there was, a, I think, a downgrade of U, UBS saying kind of uh, they downgraded the company from uh, buy to sell or something uh, similar, especially because of the ESG risk. Because there is additional risk, people are waiting, waking up that the promises made are not fully true. And actually there is, you could say, a political agenda behind it. And a political agenda, everybody is fine in a democracy to have their ideas, but it is a political agenda. It's, it's some choice that you make. And I think also in, in many scientists do not agree what the right choice is in order to change our, our, our way of life towards the climate, the planet and, and, and each other. There is no consensus about it, so it's a choice. And that choice should be made by investors and not by the asset managers. And on top of that, I think, and this is the big thing, um, is I think there is a huge risk of um, that uh, regulators and central bankers are going to enforce this kind of ESG sustainability in the regulation. And um, then we are ba basically creating huge systemic risk. And that's actually their job to avoid systemic risk. But now if you push everybody in the same corner, sustainability investments, ESG, and as I said, in that corner there are lower returns and higher risk, and something goes wrong in that corner, then you have really a systemic event. And actually, it's the task of regulators and central bankers to avoid such kind of systemic events and take care of, uh, of price stability and not uh, in, um, in increasing the systemic risk. Wim Schuysens, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.